of all grace and mercy, who did send thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to life. Most humble and heartily we give thee thanks, that by his death have destroyed the power of death, and by his glorious resurrection open the kingdom of heaven to our believers. Grant us assuredly to know that because he lives, we shall live also. Yes. And that neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. God of all mercy and God of all comfort, look in tender mercy and love and pity, we beseech thee on thy sorrowing servants. Enable them to find in thee their refuge and strength in very present help in trouble. And to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, grant them faith and hope in him, who by the death had conquered death, and by rising again he opened the gates of everlasting life. Bless them, O God, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want us to just do this. Did anybody have a Bible to read? Nobody? All right. And scripture reading is taken from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verses 1 to 8. To everything there is a season, and to every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. Okay, and the text and the God gives our hearts the public reading of his holy word. Today we are gathered here to celebrate the life of our dear friend, brother, uncle, Henry Charles. I've known him for a long time. Before most of you were born. So, it hurts sometimes when we have funeral services like this. But that's our norm nowadays. But I want to refresh our minds to let you know that 
Dying is part of life. If you don't want to die, then don't born. Once you are born, then as life goes on, you will always see a coffin and you'll always hear weeping. You'll always hear and see the sad tears and sad faces at times like this. But there's a time for everything under the sun. Everybody in our lives, we want to know the end of our times. We want to know what lies ahead for our future. It's no different from King Saul who in the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 26, after Saul has been hunting down his son-in-law to kill him, and everything had gone haywire, he wanted to know his future. And for many of us, we want to know our future too. So we search in every nook and cranny to find someone who can tell us what will happen to us next. But there is always, the Bible says, a time to be born and a time to die. So whether you like it, yes or no, death is always going to be with us. So Saul did not get the right answer. And he, stole, he said in his words, I have played the fool. In life, we play the fool in so many ways. We live as though we would never die, and we die as though we would ne we have never lived. Sometimes we plan, have great plans, and we are said, well, we are going to be there, we are going to do this, and do the other, but leaving out God from our lives. There is a hope for those who trust in God. There is a hope for those who believe in God, not for those who go to church. People who go to church sometimes sub seldom think about God. They seldom think about life hereafter. They believe that by paying good tithes and God offering and doing this and doing that, that, that would give them a passport to heaven, but it's not like that. It's only who believe in Jesus Christ and trust in his redeeming love. You see, in life, we have so many things around us. And even in these modern times, when we have things that we cannot even use, we have clothes that we cannot even wear, and we might have never wear them again because you have no place to go to socialize anymore. This would be a long haul. So many of us would not make it to see the end of it. But for those who put their trust in God, there is always a way out of the dark situation. Weeping only endure for a night. Joy comes in the morning. If we have to enjoy and, and receive the joy that we need to hold on just a little longer. Not holding on to our wealth, not holding on to our homes, not holding on to the things that we have or possess because a man's life does not consist of the abundance of things that he possess. Whatever we have in this life, we are going to leave all of it. A time to gather, and a time to struggle, a time to be born, a time to die. We know that we, are bo we have been born. We don't know how we are going back, whether we are going back in parts, or whether we are going back home. It doesn't matter if you're going parts, my friend. What is important is to know that you have made it right with your God. You go with one hand, one foot, no less. It doesn't matter. When you come back in the new life, if you trust in God, the new life gives you a new hope, a new life, a new body. No more affliction, no more sorrows or pains. God has promised us that. But we need to just trust God for a while. Believe in Him. Well, I'm going to church. Oh, yes. But not everybody that say, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven. So mark that well. It's for those who believe 
Yes. There are many people who are there in church, but they are not in Christ. Exactly. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away and all things are become new. Yes. It doesn't matter how you look at others. God did not put us here to judge one another. He told us just to occupy our space and live right with our brethren that is here. We want to live as though we are living on the battlefield. That's what nowadays everybody wants something and when they don't get it, they do all kind of things to get it. Not knowing that there's a time to give up all of this. The wise man who wrote the same book of Ecclesiastes says, he has seen something in his life. A man that doesn't have any children, any generation, work hard all day, all his life, save up much, die and live all day. Don't know who would gather there. So today, I want to encourage you. In this life, there is hope. Hope in life, in death there is no hope. There is hope in life when you trust in a living God. When you trust in the God of heaven and earth. Not in Buddha, not in Baha'u'llah, not in Lakshmi. The Lord wants your service. He wants your praise. He wants your attention. And God has been touching us in so many ways to, take, to get our attention. But no, we are too busy. Not knowing that there is a time that we are going to die. When you are going, you care nothing. A very rich, a very poor, a very old, a very young. I've never seen one person walk with a suitcase, a briefcase, or a wallet. Nothing. Hands are stretched out by their sides. And even they fold the hands up. I know that some people fold the hands over the, over the belly. But that doesn't say nothing. Nothing inside that. All you can take with you is Christ. If you live in Christ, you will die in Christ. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. But we don't want to be blessed in the Lord. We want to be blessed with wealth. We want to bless, be blessed with friends and, and nice things. It's good to have those things, yes? Because that's what they, they work for. But that would not give you life. The Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, if only in this life we have hope, then we are miserable, most miserable. Having hope in this world, just to be born, eat, drink, be merry, and die. No, my friend, there's much more than that. It's a life pleasing to God that would enable us a portion when you trumpet of the Lord's song. The first trump of the Lord's song, the dead in Christ, if the dead in Christ shall rise, that means you, if you're dead out of Christ, you're not going to get up the first time. Trust in God, you're going to get there. Don't wait. Life is short. And death is certain. So the short time that we have here, let's make use of the time. Because when we are here in the box, there's no time for service, no time for praise, no time for recollection, no time for calling upon the Lord. Now is the time while we have our life in our breath. While we have the breath in our bodies, let us serve the Lord. Hosea chapter 10 and verse 12 which says, if you ask Hosea, what time is it in your life? Hosea would have said, it is time to seek the Lord. Isaiah echoed the same sentiments and he says, Fall upon the Lord while he is near. Seek him while he may be found. Fall upon him while he is here. Let the wicked forsake his ways. Unrighteous man forsake his thought. Come to the Lord. Jesus is calling today. Calling is calling on the airwaves, on the street corners. You are hearing that Long Ago Church used to be full. But nowadays, everybody could go to church anytime and get a whole bench for yourself. Because people are not going to church anymore. They said that is not an old fashioned thing. 
Young people said that it's old people thing. <laughs> I don't know. But there's a time for you to get old. There's a time for you to die. If you are not prepared for that, then you are wasting your time. Prepare for that. It's coming. We can't change it. It's always present there. You see, we walk around as though everything is all right. But we are walking with our greatest enemy, sneaking right by our side. At any moment, he touches you. And that is the end of it. You can't take when he knocks at your door. When they touch you, you can't say, well, look, I already hit you, maybe you make a mistake, is it wrong? Not no wrong identity. Your identity is sure. He knows that your time has reached. You don't know. Psalm 39, Lord, make me to know mine end and the measure of my days that I may know how frail I am. In Psalm 90, the psalmist echoed the same sentence, same words. He want to know the end that he would apply his life. But no, there is no time to know. You don't know the time, nor the hour. That comes as a thief in the night.
purposes not to eat except it die. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be. But God gives it that body as it are pleasing, and to every seed his own body. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body, and there is a spiritual body. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither the corruption inherit in corruption. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written. Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Thanks be to God, who giveth up the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the works of the Lord, for you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. shall have departed this life in thy faith. We may rest in him as our hope in this our brother. And that we may receive the blessing, well done, good and faithful servant, enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Dear brother Henry Charles departed. We therefore commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, in short and certain hope in the resurrection of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord, yet from henceforth say to speak this. Say to speak they may rest from their labors and their works to follow them. Almighty God, whose days are without end and whose mercies cannot be numbered, make us deeply sensible of the shortness and uncertainty of human life and let thy Holy Spirit lead us through this present world in holiness and righteousness all the days of our life, that when we have served thee in our day and generation, we may be gathered to our fathers. Having the testimony of our good conscience in the communion of thy church, in the confidence of a certain faith, in the comfort of a holy hope, in favor with you, o God, and in perfect charity with all mankind. O God, who by the death of thy dear son hath destroyed death, 
by his restitution and sanctified the graves of the saints, and by his glorious resurrection and brought life and immortality to life. Receive, we beseech you, our unfeigned thanks for that victory over death and the grave which have obtained for us and for all who seek in him. Keep us in everlasting fellowship with all those that wait for thee on earth, with all that are around thee in heaven, in union with him who is the resurrection and the life, who liveth and remaineth with thee and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, now and forevermore. Amen. Grant rescue your servant of God, eternal peace, grant us the day. Sleep in peace, my brother. Sleep in peace. Amen. And we can sing. We can stop the song she gave us from the end of the season.